Hi, my name is Udit and I'm a fifth year PhD student at Harvard University. Today, I'll be presenting work that has been a collaboration between Harvard and Facebook AI research on understanding the environmental footprint of computing. Now, while the environmental footprint of computing is a multifaceted problem, today we're gonna to be focusing on one particular dimension of environmental impact, namely carbon footprint. Over the last 20 years, we've seen hardware and software advances dramatically improving the performance and energy efficiency of computing. But the question that we're interested in today is, how have these advances affected computing's overall environmental sustainability, and in particular, its carbon footprint? Recent studies have shown that when we combine emissions from operating mobile devices, communication systems, and data centers, computing's environmental footprint continues to grow. In fact, in 2015 alone, information and computing technology consumed over 700 million metric tons of CO2, which is equivalent to roughly half the aviation industry's end-to-end -end footprint. Estimates also show that if left unchecked, these emission factors will continue to grow and even double over the next decade. Now, while the exact rate of increase is challenging to predict, there are many reasons why we should expect the overall footprint of computing to grow over time. First, only 59% of the world is online currently. As more people gain access to reliable internet connectivity, we should expect more mobile devices and data centers, which is gonna cause an increase in the carbon footprint of computing. Next, with emerging applications like AI, AR, VR, autonomous driving, and scientific computing applications, the demand for computing resources will continue to grow. And finally, in addition to high, the higher computing demands, improving efficiency will become increasingly harder. Already, we're seeing that warehouse-scale data centers are operating at a near-optimal PUE of around 1.1. And as Moore's law slows down, realizing large efficiency improvements across the computing landscape will be challenging. Given these challenges, there's been an increased focus on sustainable computing over the last few years. For example, environmental sustainability has been an interest to many researchers. Last year, Bobby Monet gave a keynote at Micro on the challenges and opportunities of architecting a sustainable planet. The Zero Carbon Cloud Project designed sustainable, renewable energy-driven cloud computing systems by exploiting stranded power in our power grids. From the application and algorithm side, the AI community has been characterizing the large carbon footprint of training state-of-the-art natural language processing models. And finally, from the circuit side, researchers have been developing device-level environmental cost models. Now, in addition to researchers, and given the growing environmental footprint of computing, technology companies are pledging carbon neutrality. For instance, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, and others have all pledged to reach carbon neutrality over the next decade. In this talk, we really explore what role computer systems and architecture researchers and developers can play in achieving sustainable computing going forward. Specifically, we're asking the question, where does computing's carbon footprint come from? Now, in our journey to answer this question, what we found was quite surprising to some of our collaborators that have spent a lot of time thinking about hardware performance and energy efficiency optimizations. In particular, we found that computing's carbon footprint not only comes from the energy consumed by running applications on hardware platforms, but in fact, also from the manufacturing of hardware devices themselves. In fact, in many cases, at both the mobile and the data center scale, we find that the carbon footprint from manufacturing hardware platforms can outweigh the carbon footprint from operational energy consumption. This key insight comes from analyzing dozens of publicly available and validated sustainability reports including life cycle analyses, emission factors based on the GHG or greenhouse gas protocol, and wafer scale breakdowns to understand the underlying trends in computing's carbon footprint. If we're interested in learning more about the analysis that we conducted and the carbon footprint of computing, I invite you to take a look at our paper and the full talk presentation. The paper and full talk detail the role of hardware manufacturing of integrated circuits, including system on chips or SOCs, DRAM-based memory systems, and NAND flash storage in mobile carbon footprints. You can also find the role that renewable energy plays in powering modern warehouse-scale data centers, 
and their OPEX-related and CAPEX-related emissions. You can also find the role that renewable energy plays in future semiconductor fabs. And finally, the paper and talk show that optimizing performance and efficiency is not enough in order to realize sustainable computing. Instead, we find that in order to realize sustainable computing, the hardware design space must include ways of integrating renewable energy sources, increasing utilization with co-location and virtualization, extending hardware lifetimes with increased hardware reliability, and reducing wasted capacity by revisiting resource provisioning decisions and the role of dark silicon. To wrap things up, we'll be hosting the CLEAR workshop for computing landscapes for environmental accountability and responsibility in conjunction with ISCA 2021. I hope we'll see you there and thanks for listening.